Welcome to Darren Evans Paranormal Radio, where you can tune in to some of the best in paranormal programming. So if I were you, I'd grab a beer, take a load off your feet, and be ready for some kick-ass talk radio right here, right about now. I'm your host, Darren Evans, and there's no telling what you're going to hear about today. Paranormal news, creepy stories, research topics, UFOs, Bigfoot, aliens, paranormal events, what's new on paranormal TV, the Zozo phenomenon, ghost adventures, and much more. Only right here in the Nevada Triangle. This This is Darren and his Paranormal Radio. We are live once again in the Nevada Triangle. Yes, right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Darren Evans, your host here. Darren Evans Paranormal Radio Podcast. Joining me once again, the lovely, the amazing Danae McDowell. How are you? I'm hanging in there. We're all kind of hanging in there today. And it's been a while since I've done, uh, you know, this whole uh, radio podcast. Um, but I've kind of, I can't do it all the time. It takes a lot of editing, it takes a lot of time to record these. But and I, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that wants to wait until I have enough content to bring forth to you in a radio podcast, a paranormal radio podcast. And, you know, our hearts are heavy. Um, Today we find out we've lost an anchor in the paranormal. We've lost a pioneer. The paranormal world has lost Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Noted paranormal author, prolific author of over 65 books of the paranormal, including encyclopedias of the paranormal, including... A, a variety of topics in the paranormal that she was considered uh, one of the most foremost authorities or experts in, in various in several categories of the paranormal. And what a day it's been, you know. Um, mm-hmm. um, Very emotional you know, it's been day. it's been an emotional day, and one that I wanted to kind of share with my listeners uh, anyone who's interested in the paranormal knows Rosemary Ellen Guiley is one of the most respected names in the paranormal and so um, I'm going to try to be as lighthearted as possible in this radio show uh, you know Rosemary and I both co-authored the Zozo Phenomenon and you know Something strange happened at your work today that will lead all into what uh, uh, I want to get into. You know, part of that is Rosemary, you know, if she believed in something, she she would reach out. And, you know, it's like it, it, what's weird is uh, I can kind of it's hard. I've been trying to deal with this in my mind all day is that, you know, I got pretty close with Rosemary uh, during the writing of this book that we both um, came out with in 2016, um, which was kind of a result of her interviewing me for her book that she had written I believe it was in 2014 Ouija Gone Wild and this was at a time not shortly after I was basically laughed out of paranormal chat rooms back in 2007 on into 2008 when I began talking about the Zozo phenomenon I was literally laughed out of chat rooms. Uh, people called me an idiot, called me crazy. I actually documented some of this in a website that was called In Search of uh, Ghosts or something of that nature. And this was before the, the film I Am Zozo came out, which some know is, is, a, is a film based loosely based on my research into what's been become known as the Zozo phenomenon. And so, you know, 
let's not take anything away from Rosemary, but you know, I want to lead into you know you something now you work for Danae, you work for an organization. Yes, I do. That accepts donations. Mm-hmm. And any something any was donated. Donations. Yeah. Now this could be toys. Now we found uh, you know, an Annabelle, an almost exact replica of the famous Raggedy Ann doll there. And so you found something today. Yeah. I find a lot of incredible things at this place where I work at. But um, today, when I, I went to work, I we arrived a little late because we had to get a, ve- a tire for our vehicle. And as I was clocking in and stuff and getting ready for my shift, something told me to go to uh, the back corner of of the store where we have our books and our collectibles are more fragile, more rare items and in the case was a flag. Now this flag, it's a it's a funeral flag for a fallen soldier or possibly someone in the silver service, um, police officer, fireman. It's hard to say I can't dictate which one, but someone donated this precious very honorable item and something told me to go and look at it and when I saw it it just it broke my heart and thanks to some of our our dear dear friends we were able to come together and and rescue it so to speak and now we're on a mission to try and find a VFW or VA's office here in the city that will help distinguish what flag it is, um, if they will accept it, and put it in a better shadow box that's in better condition, um, display it properly, and if we can't, then we will adopt it and we will take care of it because this is something very, very special. You know, my my grandfather served in the army, and my dad was given the flag, and my dad is a veteran as well. And so when he passes away, I will also have his his flag. And so for me, this is something that is very very close to my heart. And what I find amazing in this whole day full of news and uh you know things that happened last night i mean i heard gunshots going off you know there's always something interesting or crazy going on in vegas uh or in each of our lives but you know i shared on the last podcast that after lorraine warren died you know the day she died i received a gift from gary gulka from ghost adventures it was an SB7 ghost box, and it arrived in the mail on the very day that Lorraine Warren passed. And what I find ironic is I wake up today to a lot of messages, and I had my phone on silent. I awoken to a lot of messages with people asking me if it were true that Rosemary Ellen Guiley passed. And you know how the internet is today with fake news and all this kind of stuff. And you don't really, nothing really prepares you for this type of news, you know. And so you had sent me a text message and I'm trying to deal with all this. And you'd asked me if I was okay. And I was just like, well, I don't, I don't know that I am right now. Rosemary and I um, really became uh, a unique uh tandem when we were writing you know this this whole crazy book that kind of chronicled my experiences in the zozo phenomenon and then doing research with her now you want to talk about a researcher um you know i've called myself that in the past um but you really you know you really don't know what a researcher is until you begin to work with someone like Rosemary Ellen Guiley, on a book, um, on a very controversial topic. 
um, you know, and she kind of took a chance, you know, and, and I kind of shared, you know, I, I, I've been watching Facebook all day and I've seen such amazing outpouring of love and respect for Rosemary and people like Andrea Perone, John Zaffis, Karen Dahlman, Joshua P. Warren, David Weatherly. These are all people that posted very um, heartfelt thoughts and, and tributes and condolences to Rosemary, her husband and her family. And so it's been it's been just a it's just been one of those days, you know. And honey, you finding this flag and on the day you know that we find out about Rosemary and you know and how you pick that up and how you and Bonnie and Susan. Uh, whom we're all Facebook friends with, came together today to rescue an American flag that's very dusty, it's very old, it's in a very vintage triangular uh, case. Um, I, I, you know, I know we're both kind of, you know, very emotional today for um, a lot of different reasons. But for that to happen and for us to be able to obtain this flag and to um, kind of give tribute to maybe a forgotten soldier, maybe, um, you know, who knows who this flag was was presented to or who, uh, you know, I just don't know. But for us to be able to come across this and the way that, that it happened and the way that it unfolded, not only on the passing of, of you know, Rosemary, but the way that you came together on Facebook with, you know, with another network of friends, um, to save this, you know, this memorabilia, this, this very important American flag that was given to someone for a purpose. And, you know, and I think, you know, I just, when you were on the phone with your father earlier and I told him, you know what, I'm just, I'm in love with this amazing woman whom you've helped create. Um, You've got a heart of gold, honey, and it shows. And I, I thank, you know, I thank you for being who you are. But we're, we, you know, it's it's just. I remember when I met Rosemary for the first time. Um, I was invited to speak, as was her and and uh, John Zaffis, and a few others at a, at the 125th anniversary celebration of the Ouija board. It was called OuijaCon. And I was I was pretty nervous. This was uh, this was you know I'd been to a few paranormal conferences, but nothing on the scale of, of what this was in Baltimore. And this was during the race riots. This all all happened the same weekend. Um, and it was an unforgettable event, you know. And it was a celebration of the mysterious history, uh, you know, of the of the Ouija board. And. You know, that's where I had met Rosemary, and I'll never forget this. When I I was standing outside of this beautiful hotel, and I seen Rosemary attempting to unpack a whole bunch of boxes out of the back of this cab. And I knew, you know, I knew it was Rosemary, and I was excited, and I, and I kind of just walked right up. I wanted to help her, you know. Uh... And what was funny is before she even gave me eye contact, she handed me this large box and, and she said, if you drop this box, screw the bad luck, you're going to have to deal with me, Darren. And how she knew it was me without giving me eye contact, I have no idea. But I remember thinking to myself, oh shit. Not only am I meeting Rosemary, I'm, I'm you know, now I'm uh, been given the uh, the duty, you know, to to carry her many scrying mirrors into the event, which Rosemary uh, was into scrying, and she uh, was selling them at this event. And so, I, yes, I met Rosemary, and we hung out. You know, for a couple of days at OuijaCon, and there were some strange things that happened during the event. I had a chance to also meet Karen Dahlman, who was there for the first time. And actually, I, I believe she met Rosemary at that event, and that was also her first time. 
uh, having the chance to to meet Rosemary and hang out. And I did interview both of those two and a few other people, including a Danish researcher who was doing eye tracking experiments during Ouija Con, in which uh, numerous people, you know, uh, nominated themselves to become a part of this unique eye tracking Ouija experiment. And guess who showed up? Uh, many people reported that Zozo showed up during these eye tracking experiments at WijiCon. And so it was a hell of a weekend. And I got pictures with chip coffee. You know what what was really you know, I was I was as nervous as a pregnant nun. Okay? Now that's pretty nervous. But I was I found myself on stage on a panel of experts, including Chip Coffee, John Zaffis, Rosemary Ellen Guiley, Karen Dahlman, and there's me, you know, find myself in a crowd, you know, in front of a crowd of people with a panel of experts at WijiCon. But you know what? When it came time for me to give my lecture, I looked out to the crowd and there was there was quite a few people out in the crowd. And I had my presentation ready. And I saw Rosemary in the third row. And she had a notebook. And she was taking notes. And I was like, I'll never forget that. You know, here's Rosemary Ellen Guiley. And this was, you know, this was right when we had agreed to, um, to you know, collaborate on a book about the Zozo phenomenon. And so, wow, what a day. You know, and um, I want I want to get into some other things. Um, you know, before we uh, before we go much further, you know, uh, I had mentioned in the last podcast that we had found some you know, some scorpions here in the in the, in the uh, Nevada Triangle in the Las Vegas Valley. Now, there are twenty five species. An entire threshold, an entire variety of these scorpions that will frequent traffic areas of, of, of you know footpath. Uh, we find them in very strange places. And if I'm not sleepy tonight, this is your fault. <laughs> now wait a minute. I still haven't seen a spider. Thank God. Here. In the Las Vegas, and I've been, well, wait a minute. I did see one underneath the truck today when we were changing the tire. I seen a spider web and I seen a little black spider. That's the only spider that I've seen. And he's lived out there on the truck now for for a few weeks, I think. He, he's lucky. Well, I don't know how lucky he is because uh, <laughs> we just got this thing running again. But anyway, um, from what I understand, now I've done a little bit of research and as I understand... The Arizona bark scorpion is the most venomous and the most common venomous pest in the Las Vegas Valley. That is very true. I lived in Mesquite, Nevada for about four years and in my area that I lived at was known as the Scorpion Haven. We had a multitude of little scorpion nests on the underside of the um, the desert floor that was supposedly home to an undescribable amount of scorpions. And so they were a common problem, especially at my grandmother's house. Well, here's what I don't want to happen to be a common problem. Someone posted, and I, po I posted this on Facebook myself, and I seen a picture of one of these Arizona bark scorpions nesting very auspiciously in a roll of toilet paper. And so in that post, I named it the Quilted Northern, a very rare species of the Arizona bark scorpion that's located I believe here in here in, the, in the Las Vegas Valley. Yes. Now this quilted northern um, 
is something that you don't want to come across. No. I can promise you that. You, you don't. Now, here's something that we are going to come across here in the future. Getting back to our paranormal news is, um, as I understand it, now, it, speaking of scorpions, by the way, what is the name of that band you listen to? <laughs> it's called Ghost. It's called, oh, the one that, I want to be with you. And, uh, da, 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 where? They sound like the Scorpions, a heavy metal band. It's called Dance Macabre. Thank you very Dance much. Dance Macabre. And yes, they do sound an awful lot like the Scorpions in their heyday. Um, the way that they, that they show themselves or their showmanship. Now, wait a minute. They're showing themselves in public? No, they... At least the lead singer doesn't. They dress up in um, what looks to be satanic type, ritualistic robes. No, um, that doesn't help things. Yeah, no, no, this is the band Ghost, right? That sounds yes. like the band. Yes. One of my favorite bands, the Scorpions. Their their wardrobe is very controversial. And I guess so. And their lead singer I find quite fascinating because he wears a mask. Do you find him attractive? No. I. Oh, just... His, fascinating. He's very fascinating because he wears a mask to cover his real I mean, face. Does he wear yoga pants? No. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, here's someone else that may or may not wear yoga pants. William Shatner has a new paranormal. Oh, uh, that's an image I didn't need. A new paranormal show. Um, you know that a, a friend, David Spinks, has, has also recently been a part of with this whole unexplained. William Shatner. Now that's, you know, I told Dave, now that's an honor to go on a show with William Shatner. Now, you know, remember Leonard Nimoy was was uh, at one time the host of In Search Of. Yes, he was. I I didn't have cable at the time, so I never had the ability to watch it, but... Now, honey, I had a dream that Captain Picard was involved in the paranormal. Now, I don't know. Uh, that's all I remember. <laughs> and what's funny is we watched the new trailer for the new... What is it? A show? Is it a series? It's, it's a Picard, it's, right? It's Picard. It's a show. And this has been... It'll take place 19 years after the events of the last Star Trek, which featured Sir Patrick Stewart, Nemesis. And this takes place 19 years later. And... It is not altered by the Kelvin timeline, which, for all you non-nerds out there, is when they did the reboot with Christopher Pine and Zachary Quinto in 2009, I believe, with, again, Leonard Nimoy. And he jumped a, a, a wormhole and caused an alter to the timeline. Now, this show has nothing to do with that. It follows the original timeline set in presidents with the last events of Nemesis. And Sir Patrick Stewart has um, also ex a co-executive produced this show. So he has a lot of say on how it's done, what's going on. Um, I think a lot of fans will see their favorite characters coming back. They'll see some iconic memorabilia. I hope when he's done with all this, I hope he just retires and, and decides he's going to do it like a year worth of uh, haunted locations, kind of like what William Shatner's doing. You it's know, hard to say. Uh, you never know. You never I mean, he know, could team up with with Josh Gates or somebody. <laughs> I don't you know? know. He has never expressed an interest with the paranormal. However, I do know that he is an avid fan of Beavis and Butthead, one of your favorite shows. I did not know that. <laughs> yes. He yeah, loves um, Beavis no, that's and Butthead. Unexpected. He was a, he did a voiceover for one of the uh, agents in American Dad. Oh wow! He's he's quite the cartoon aficionado. Well, you know, you know, we're talking about Picard, you know, uh, Patrick Stewart, William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy. These are all pa you know pa uh, pioneers in the, in the whole science fiction genre. You know, in Comic Con, Ghost Adventures shows up last week in San Diego. I watched their grand entrance to a, a, just a, everybody on their feet. I am quite surprised to see 
Ghost Adventures at the San Diego Comic Con because normally their panels, you know, revolve around car, you know, comic book stuff, um, movies, cartoons. You, you don't see a lot of paranormal type things at Comic Con. It's typically not usual. Well, this isn't your typical paranormal show. This That's is Ghost Adventures. True. Now. You know, this band, you know, we, we were talking about this earlier. You know, I never can remember their name for some reason. They sound like the score. I want to be with you. It's, it's a very catchy song. Name to remember. Uh, but, you know, Ghosts. now that they're, you know, you tell me that they're wearing yoga pants and exposing they're themselves. I don't think I'm going to be pants. listening to much more of this band. Uh, but, you know, speaking of ghosts, you know, you've got Ghost Brothers, which is coming right back out. You know, I think it's their second or third season, maybe. I don't know. But you got Ghost, uh, you know, Ghost This, Ghost That, Ghost Lab, Ghost Bait, uh, you know, the uh, Ghost, ghost Hunters, Adventures, Dave. Ghost Hunters. I mean, everything is ghosts. Jason Hawes uh, is coming back. Jason Hawes with, coming back with Ghost Nation. Uh, Grant the whole Taps thing. Reviving Ghost Hunters. Ghost Hunters. How can anybody keep track of all this ghost shit dude it is it's everywhere it you know it's the year of the paranormal it must be um travel channel is now almost exclusively paranormal you've got AD coming out with the new whole reboot of the ghost uh and you know ghost hunters and the whole uh ghost hunters international spinoff and the kindred spirit spinoff of that uh you know, and mention. you've got all these spinoffs of spinoffs, and it's just and not wow. To, not to mention your amazing contribution to the paranormal that you and Josh did this past weekend with Cosmic Invocation. Now, folks, I think I talked a little bit on our last podcast about Cosmic Invocation, and you know, I had reached out to Rosemary when I first got involved with some of this using a Ouija to summon UFO thing you know and I knew something was wrong I didn't know what it was um, but she did refer me to David Weatherly a very well-known very respectful amazing uh, paranormal investigator author shaman uh, the guys that he, he reminds me a lot of Josh and you know and how strange is it that we all kind of landed here in the Nevada Triangle, we've kind of formed our own little triangular group with me and Joshua P. Warren and David Weatherly, where we did, in front of Fox News 5 cameras here just outside of Vegas, uh, they joined us for a very, let's just say, let's just call it a paranormal powwow in the desert. Uh... You know, there was a lot of people, you know, there was a select group of people that showed up, including former NASA artist Corby Waste, mm -hmm. Nick Weird and his wife. Uh, Josh's wife, Lauren, was there. Um, and, and a few other people, very interesting people that decided to show up for this crazy event where we combine vintage spirituality techniques and modern technology in a unique triangular association you know with one intent and that was to summon a UFO now I must say that it, uh, you know things got kinda crazy there for a while um, I brought the Paratech app uh, had the you know the whole speech uh, random speech vocalizer going on along with the SB7 that I named Lorraine because I did get it on Lorraine's on the on the day that she uh, had passed. So um, you know, and, and it was because my brother passed. You know, that's when I got hold of Gary. That's the whole reason why he sent me that SB7. But we had the SB7 going along with this Paratech device that anybody can download. It's free. I encourage anybody. I use it in the Norman episode as well. And I've shared it with a few people that have also used it to uh, amazing results. And uh, I'll let you guys be the judge of that because it is free and you can download it anytime. But I encourage you to use it. Now, I've used it during the Ouija session at Cosmic Con, Cosmic Invocation. And 
I was using it with a friend of mine named Brent from Oklahoma who had a very interesting way home by bus. The bus broke down twice in the desert. Someone had a grand mal seizure. It was delayed for another seven hours until paramedics could arrive. Anyway, that's another story. But he was there. We began to use the Ouija, and immediately we established contact with something. And uh, I was I was kind of curious if you know because I, honestly I don't know if it's going to move or not. I mean, when I was on Ghost Adventures last Halloween, it wasn't moving very well. You know, and so, but boy, howdy, did it take off this time? Uh, and it, you know, it actually invited David Weatherly to sit down with us at the session. And you know, Nick Weird had never used a Ouija board before, and he gets on the thing. It, and the Paratech device said his first and middle name, much to the amazement of everyone present at Cosmic Invocation. And so these devices work, you know, uh, it worked, you know, the Norman, you know, the, the whole Norman the Haunted Doll episode came out and it's been getting some really cool reviews, you know, and that whole thing with Stephen Lancaster you know, and, you know, Stephen and I, uh, you know, was working on that whole Norman case with Rosemary years ago when he first got, you know, got this doll. And uh, I was going through emails earlier today and, you know, I was reading a correspondence that Stephen and I had had with her. And so, you know, I've, I've been very fortunate to meet some, you know, some very interesting people in the paranormal. And... You know, Ghost Adventures is doing a new... And I just found out what yesterday that Ghost Adventures has a new mini-series coming out. Really? That deals with serial killers. Why am I not surprised? I'm not surprised either. Now, at Comic-Con, they also revealed that they are going to do an investigation this Halloween on The Conjuring House. That should be interesting. Now, I, I had guessed that it was the Amityville... And boy, was I close. I mean, uh, this is the Conjuring House. No, the whole, you know, uh, all these movies about Annabelle and Ed and Lorraine Warren, which brings me to my next controversy in paranormal news. John Zaffis is pissed. And that doesn't happen very often. Now, I've been a follower. When, you know, when Josh and David and I, after Cosmic Invocation, we all sat down. And we were talking about, you know, who is it? Who is the real pioneers of the paranormal? And there were a few names, you know, Hans Holzer. Uh, you know, there was there was a lot of names brought. John Zaffis, Rosemary Ellen Guiley. You know, I'm sitting here talking about paranormal pioneers with two people that I consider to be, you know, pioneers of the paranormal, in Joshua P. Warren and David Weatherly, whom were also very good friends with Rosemary Ellen Guiley and so I am very fortunate to be in some pretty good company when it comes to the paranormal some of the strange experiments that I involve myself in with UFO summoning with David Weatherly and Joshua P. Warren you know when Joshua you know he's the mad scientist of the paranormal you know on Ghost Adventures we used the Tesla coil machine we got on a board uh, and the, the the energy that was in the air, you talk about that song. I can feel it in the air tonight. Phil Collins. Phil Collins. Yes. Now that whole drum solo, you know, magnify that times a hundred, and that's you know, you know, I felt like doing air drums right there in the haunted museum with Zach Bagans. Now Zach Bagans being another pioneer, you know paranormal pioneer outlaw right uh jason hawes you know him and grant started something you know years ago ghost hunters is actually what got me into the paranormal me and my best friend holly would watch it every wednesday night on sci-fi it was kind of our show and we were introduced to the paranormal through ghost hunters and we started going around our hometown in a couple of places that we could easily access without getting into trouble. <laughs> and You know who this reminds me of, though? <laughs> I, 
I mean, was Scooby and them in the gang? <laughs> were they not the first ghost hunters? No, I, I don't know. I think they were more like ghost detectives because there was cracking okay. cases. Okay, ghost lab, ghost, uh, you, you, you put a word after it. Well, anyway, John Zaffis was really pissed. He's at a paranormal convention. Now, John Zaffis being one of the most noted, uh, respected demonologists, uh, haunted collector. He wrote the foreword to uh, the Zozo phenomenon with me and Rose. Uh, the guy is just, you know, this guy's paid his dues. Uh, and for, I guess he had walked up to someone who had a, a replica Annabelle doll. And I guess John was asking about, and, and the, whoever this guy was said that he was John Zaffis's cousin. And evidently didn't uh, recognize John, which I, I can't see that happening. Now, you talk about a face and a voice and just everything. I mean, when you see John Zaffis, you know who that is, right? And for some clown... Uh, you know, I got to look at you know, and I'm not going to mention any names here, but this, you know, this particular organization has got ties to various groups, and they're, you know, they're in damage control mode big time. Number one, you don't piss off John Zaffis. I mean, that's just, I mean, I, I just can't imagine, you know, um, someone with an Annabelle doll and talking about Ed and Lorraine Warren, and you know, I think there was some. Uh, there's some gray area as to if they maybe would have been, you know, maybe might have been misrepresented, you know. Uh, I don't know. All I know is that uh, there's a big backlash right now. And I don't know. I I, uh, I think these people need to reconsider. And I think that this, it's been a problem, you know. And one of the things that I, that I want to share, getting back to Rosemary is you know she she had a definite interest in all things spiritual but you know she had given some advice and recommendations um, when dealing with the spirit realm and, and spirit communication and I want to share with you some some of what she said um, in closing you know about using a spirit board now this is Rosemary Ellen Guiley spirit boards like all spirit communication tools should be treated with respect they are devices for accessing the dead spirits and intelligences not gaming devices in earlier times spirit communication was opened with ritual to ensure that the human body mind and spirit would be properly prepared the same principles apply today. We don't need to don robes and act on our elaborate rituals, but we do need to bring a mindfulness to any Ouija session. Now, the potential communicators on the other side of this board or this uh, IT device, whatever methodology that you're using in the, you know, to contact spirits, whether they are discarnate humans or non-human entities, that you must read and respond to the vibration of the users. In esoteric terms, the vibration consists of subtle spiritual energies that every person sends out with their own consciousness, including their thoughts, their intentions, their emotions, even their psychological state. The spirit energy creates a kind of light, like a beacon, that gets the attention of presences, fear, anger, depression, um, other emotions, upset you know that they, they, they can create a vastly different spiritual vibration and light other than emotions such as confidence respect happiness and calmness likewise poor health fatigue drugs and alcohol will affect communications as well and so these are direct words from from rosemary in our book the zozo phenomenon and i, w I just want to thank rosemary for you know believing in someone like me that had a, a very strange experience and that culminated in a collaboration and I think I think Rosemary was definitely all about collaborations I know that she's written with with John Zaffis and she's had uh, Rick Fisher 
um, I believe her and David Weatherly have, have you know, she she's collaborated on several books of the paranormal with other authors, and she believed in networking with like-minded individuals, you know, and we are all going to miss her very much, you know, the amount of respect that she has has been evident today on Facebook and dozens and dozens of heartfelt tributes to a woman who is very, very committed to researching the paranormal, to understanding it, to writing encyclopedias of the paranormal. And I've been blessed to have met, you know, to kind of be an inside, an insider to this, but being able to share with you, anyone who's interested in the paranormal, her whole visionary living, the ways that she was helping other authors, you know, until her last tweet, um, not long ago when she was, uh, sharing a book that she was, um, very proud to be a part of. I can't remember what that book is. There's been so many, um, but you know, uh, it's been, it's been one of those crazy days and, um, it's, it's, uh, now coming up in a few days, David Weatherly, Joshua P. Warren and myself are meeting up with a, uh, news crew, uh, on a, on a larger scale than what, uh, than, uh, than what was here recently in Las Vegas, you know, uh, we'll see where this goes. Um, but I know that I'm going to be thinking about Rosemary on Wednesday night when we look towards the stars and, uh, I bet that I see a shooting star and I know that I'll be amongst some of her friends and that we are going to, um, look towards these stars and we're going to hopefully see a sign from, from, uh, from up above. And so... On that note, I want to thank you for joining me here once again. I'm Darren Evans, Paranormal Radio Podcast with my beautiful fiance, whom is about to have child, folks. We are getting close. Danae and I are having a child who looks uh, incredibly like me <laughs> on the uh, ultrasound, the, the new modern ultrasound three-dimensional uh rendering and so i don't know how many people actually know this but uh we've named him zachary jeff and so in a later podcast we'll get into the reasons why and maybe even how this came to pass we're very excited and we are very glad that you joined us right here, right now. And we never say goodbye. We say we will see you again, my friend. Take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you soon. I'm Darren Evans. Peace out.